Hey, Ben. How are you? Good. Hey, thanks for uh, inviting me. Relwyn's no stranger to Huckberry, and we've had a longstanding relationship. And again, one of those brands that we are proud to, when you say Huckberry, I think Relwyn's one that often people think about as one of our key partners. I've kind of been in peril all my life, so to speak, because my dad, um, he moved to Columbus uh, with the intention of opening up a men's clothing store. By the time I was in sixth grade, I was washing windows for him. I was taking the bus downtown from our neighborhood and doing chores like that and or, you know, straightening shelves, folding clothes in the back, in the back, ticketing garments as they came in, um, all those types of tasks. Anyway, I end up working in clothing stores through college, you know, in summer jobs, that sort of thing, selling apparel, um, even learning how to fit garments um, on guys. Even chalking garments when I was, you know, 18 and 19 years of age was kind of a scary thing. It was kind of remarkable that they actually let me do it. <laughs> it was a type of experience that made me simply realize that what I really wanted to do was product. I really wanted to be somebody that was, you know, making decisions about, you know, the architecture of the product, um, shaping out a brand in terms of its vision and its foundation and, and just the type of uh, vision it was going to have, you know, just to be very pure to a certain aesthetic that I was comfortable with and that represented kind of who I was. So what I ended up doing was getting recruited by Abercrombie and Fitch, which actually brought me back to Columbus. Abercrombie is an amazing um, experience. Uh, I started off as a merchandiser and did that for a few years, um, working in outerwear and, and sports shirts, mm -hmm. basically woven product, yeah. and um, <clears throat> end up creating a lot of products that were you know, just my own ideas, and they end up actually doing well for the company. Um, so then I was promoted to being head of men's design, which ended up being men's and boys design for Abercrombie. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that ended up being the place where I really kind of learned how to do what I do. You know, I, I got to see the, all the component tree, you know, from tech design to, um, you know, sourcing of materials to learning about what those materials are, um, all the technical properties, how things actually, you know, get put together doing what I do with Relwin is right. a matter of, you know, seeing how you can build something better. Yeah. Um, and, and learning, it's a continual learning process. You, you, can't, you can't underestimate how difficult and how complicated it can get in a hurry when you take your eye off the ball. Kind of jumping back to the, to the beginning of Rowan, was that, did you go from Abercrombie to then starting Rowan? What yeah. was the origin story of, of Rowan? How did that come about? Well, I've been at Abercrombie for oh, about 13 and a half years. And my interest was really to be able to do my own thing. That would have been basically 2006, okay. end of 05. It took me about a year of getting prototypes and working with factories I had had a relationship with mm -hmm. to get um, up and running. And the first, the first concept was actually to open a store, hmm. um, wholesale being a secondary um, uh, interest. But I, I went to market basically with goods to sell in fall of 07, actually in August of 07, telling stores that met us that, you know, we're going to be ready to ship these goods to you right away. Um, so we're taking fall orders and we're taking spring orders at yeah. the same time. It was really a spring market that we were going there with both fall and spring to, pre uh, to basically present to buyers. Got it. Um, and we captured like 25 accounts in that first season, which was awesome. You know, yeah. stores like Ron Herman, Fred Siegel, um, Stephen Allen, mm -hmm. um, Bloomingdale's and Saks were also um, part of our, our store base in that first season. When you were thinking about creating your own brand, like what foundationally did you want it to be built upon? I, well, I, first off, I wanted to be a more adult, not, I don't want to say a version of Abercrombie, but I wanted to be, I wanted to do a product that was going to be more about where I was headed. I wanted to be all about product. I didn't really care about the marketing aspects of everything. Um, this is about the materials, the fits, um, function, um, mm -hmm. utility. I really wanted to create a masculine product without talking about being masculine, but that it just was yeah. um, because all the, all the hallmarks and things that we think about in terms of product um, was about a certain Americana about, it was about the fields. It was about, you know, the woods. It was about being outdoors right. based on products that, that may have stemmed from military mm -hmm. um, uh, workwear. Uh, all the all the typical associations you'd have with what it would be to like buy vintage American product. It, it, it's, it's cool to hear you talk about it and the focus on product. And that's 
the fit, the fabric, the construction, the story and history and the design, um, but also like the timelessness and versatility. Uh, one of the sayings I like is buy less, buy better. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's always been my motto is, you know, buy better. When you think back to some of the, uh, what are some products that sort of starting at the, at the beginning of Rowan, ha have any sort of remained the same? I'm sure like you iterate constantly. Outerwear remains like, that's probably a cornerstone of our brand. If we, if I think about things that first and foremost, I want to like signal what we're doing, what we're about for in a given season or ever, yeah. it's going to be about that first layer, you know, that first layer of protection you put on, mm -hmm. um, because it kind of, it, it indicates and informs everything else. You know, blazers, we don't show any blazers with the lapels pressed down. Yeah. We always kick them up because the idea is like to wear it like a jean jacket. Cause I think it's almost cooler that way, but Hey, I know our guys are going to wear them with lapels down. So we actually do put press marks in them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they look great that way too. Um, I mean, I'm going to wear it like that as well, depending on what the, what the function is, what the, what the end use is. Yeah. Um, but I don't mind throwing one of those blazers on and, and riding my single speed across town to a bar with a buddy either. It speaks to that versatility and also timelessness. I think those are not to keep beating those they aren't buzzwords when we're talking to you and we're talking to, to, to no, no, it, it's just part of the game, part of the game. But you think about like, you know, yeah, we're not going to weddings right now. We're, we're not, you know, going to offices where a blazer is needed. Um, but there's a versatility. And, and when you do go out for a walk or when you do go to a, a socially distant beer, when your community opens back up, like to your point, like you pop that collar and the blazer, is actually like a jacket. It's not just a dress yeah. either. But then also you think about like five years down the line, like, is that going to be out of style? No. Would love sort of your take on that sort of the Relwyn linen blazer and just sort of linen in general. Well, what's super cool about the one we have right now is if you actually throw it on, you could actually go out on a baseball mound and like throw pitches because it's like amazing. The elasticity in the garment, yeah. um, you just start moving your arms around like this and it's like, <laughs> what is this? This is not the linen blazer that, you know, my dad used to have. Sure. Um, it's just remarkable. And, and because of that, you can actually taper and, and the thing can be just fit smaller, whether you want to size down or, or simply just be more comfortable wearing the jacket you've got. Anyway, I'm excited about our blazers for this, this coming fall because we've got new materials. And, and the other thing that we really dig is how we construct things from the inside out. And I think our blazer, blazers are very much representative of that. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you're also doing fall and spring. Uh, right now is the sailcloth tanker. I mean, that's just one of those iconic pieces. And, and you talk about you taking a lot of inspiration from like military design. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's, what's the story of the sailcloth? It, it starts with the fabrication because the fabrication is this peached microfiber, which actually makes it more water resistant. The stuff is super soft. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of unlike the way we've ever done that jacket because of the hand feel. Yeah. I mean, you can throw that thing on. You don't really, you don't really sense that you're wearing a jacket. Um, it's got six different pockets. You've got two side seam pockets for your hands, and you've got top down pockets from the chest to to the waist, um, along with draw cords in various places. Anyway, it, it, I think it's just a great, it's, a, it's an easy piece. You can also layer it, you know, if you want to put a hoodie under it and, and have a little bit more protection that way, at least for colder temperatures. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a classic looking military piece. What about military style draws you so much? The U.S. military was, was placing you with, you know, a set of garments that had to endure your time. I mean, you didn't, you didn't get to take a trunk of a suitcase full of, you know, different items to wear in sure. your in your in your service and so the pieces you got may have been the only pieces you had until mm -hmm. you know six months out when you maybe got a fresh pair of whatever it was yeah. what are you excited about kind of looking forward i think fabrications continue to get more technical more um aspirational in the sense of function weight mm -hmm. you know being lighter um more ecologically sound anything that's insulated for fall it's all done with 100 percent recycled polyester yarns what what's like your go-to rotation of of, of Relwin? are you constantly testing new products i'm actually wear testing one of our bottoms for fall right now it's basically based on an old military pant from like world war ii and they called them like frog skins at one time but yeah. the, the cargoes are up front and on the hips yeah it was like one of the original 
variety. It was one of the original cargo pants before cargo was a thing. Cargo's back now. I mean, my first Abercrombie was very influential in making cargo yes. pants. Yes. Yeah. Back in the day when you were there. I mean, I think yeah. probably a product that you worked on and helped develop. Um, it, it was bread and butter for us. Yeah. Yeah. But I just got a new pair of cargo pants. Um, it's great as a new parent. Like I've got burp cloth in one and bottle in the other. It's become for sure. Yeah. With our last few minutes, we'd love to uh, get some recommendations from you. Um, what are some things that you know, you're doing to stay creative, staying? I'm really big on cocktails. The Boulevardier is one that people should look up. That is something that we just started doing recently. It's this combination of bourbon, um, sweet vermouth, and Campari. I just had that for the first time last weekend. Yeah? Did yeah. you like it? Fantastic. What uh, if you had to gift a bottle of whether it's bourbon or just a, a good booze, what would it be? Watershed is a local distiller that we we like to support um, here in Columbus. Um, Oyo is another one um, that's also local. Jamie, this is awesome. Always appreciate the insight. Oh well, please. please. I, I it's it's reciprocal. 